Um, hi, everybody. So uh, my presentation is going to be done all in a video. So I'm posting the link right now. So if everybody uh, could open this video on your browser to follow the presentation, I think it's going to be better than the screen share that we're going to do. Cool. So let's get started. Um, Today, I'll be talking about Gazebo's uh, latest UX features. Some of them are uh, have been there in Gazebo for a while, but some people don't know it. Uh, some of them are new, like are going to be released in Gazebo 8, which are, we are releasing this month. Um, and I'm doing the whole presentation within Gazebo. So um, for you, uh, for people who don't know what Gazebo is, here's a general view of what Gazebo can do. Uh, Gazebo is a multi-purpose uh, robot simulator. So it can simulate not only uh, industrial arms, which is the main focus of this uh, talk today, but it can simulate humanoids, uh, flying underwater robots. It can simulate like wheel robots. So there's a lot that you can do. Today, I'm prepared this little uh, simulation slash presentation for you guys inside Gazebo using a industrial arm. Um, so let's jump straight into it. So uh, let's start with model introspection. This is uh, one of the new things that we have in Gazebo, if you right click your model and you choose view, you can see several aspects of your model right there within the simulation. Uh, right now I'm showing you the joints. So you can see uh, all the joints in your model. This is, this is a UR10 and it has a lot of Revolut joints. You can see how they are placed. Um, so another thing that you can see, I'm going to hide the joints here and I'm going to show you the link frames. Um, so this is the origin for each one of the links in your model. Uh, so you can quickly see if the links are positioned wrong or, or if there is a mistake, because fine tuning your model in simulation can be uh, a little bit uh, time consuming. So having these tools to verify your model uh, are very helpful. Now I'm showing you the center of mass of each link in the robot. Uh, you can see these spheres represent the mass of each link. Uh, the size of the sphere is proportional to the mass. So you can have an idea if your link is too heavy or too light. Um, there is also the, uh, related to that the visualization of inertia. So this is based on the inertia matrix for each link that you that you put in your SDF or URDF description of your robot. Um, so you can see if this box is kind of weirdly shaped, it means that you didn't uh, put your inertia very well. And finally, I'm here showing you the collisions. Um, so you can see that the collisions are made of cylinders, simple shapes. Instead of using the whole mesh of the robot, this helps uh, with the, the simulation itself, makes it faster and, and makes planning easier. Another uh, really cool thing that you can do is contact visualization. So if you go on the top and choose view contacts, you can see that these uh, blue spheres with green lines showed up. These are all the contacts being calculated by the physics engine. Uh, you can see them in real time. You can see how the objects are touching the uh, conveyor belt. Here I'm teleoperating the arm to touch uh, the conveyor belt so you can see where the arm touches it. Uh, it. Again, another helpful tool for you to debug your simulation as it's running. Um, oh, the conveyor belt started moving there. I think I forgot to turn it on before. Um, so yeah, so let's hide the contacts here. And... Uh, now, uh, visual markers are something that is coming up new now in Gazebo 8, which is going to be released in the end of this month. Uh, so it, there's a lot of things you can do with visual markers. They're basically uh, things that you can put in your 3D scene that are not seen by sensors. So cameras wouldn't see it, but the user looking can see it so you can debug. So right now you can see that I'm showing uh, the path that the, that the gripper is doing on the 3D space. Uh, so I'm just plotting that in 3D. Uh, so it's one of the, the cool things that you can do with visual markers. This is just publishing uh, on a topic and you can make like shapes and lines and dots and everything you want. Another cool thing is the model editor. So uh, right now on simulation, you can right click any model and edit it in place uh, while your simulation is there. So you pause the simulation, uh, then the screen gets kind of white in this. Sure. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, you can keep going. Okay, and uh, so this is inside the model editor. Uh, you can see you uh, how the links are connected by joints. You can select them and uh, yeah, see all the 
parameters of your joints of your links as described in SDF and you can edit them in place. And then I'm going to open here the left panel. You can see uh, there is a model tab on the top and it has the list of all the links and joints in the model. Again, you have access to all their properties. Um, let me open another link here to give you an idea. Uh, so this is a forearm and you can control like the visibility of all the collisions or of the visuals. So there's very fine grained control uh, when you're trying to put your model together. You can edit an existing model or even uh, start a whole model from scratch in the model editor. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna attach a little camera to the robot. So this little box is a camera. It's not the most beautiful camera, but uh, it's the model that we have here. The important thing is that it's a sensor that is gonna get data from the simulation. Um, so I'm attaching it with a fixed joint. I just created a joint by clicking on the, the 3D scene, which is very convenient. Um, so let's close here the, so the camera has been attached. We just need to save the model. And the moment you save and exit the model editor, we're back in simulation. And now our model has that camera that we just attached to it. When we press play, the arm kind of fell a little bit there. I'm going to tell, well, first let's open the camera, uh, topic viewer. So, um, whoa, where is it? Yeah, here it is. So, uh, you know, you can see the, the feed of the camera that is attached to the robot right there on that little uh, window. And as I move the robot, I'm teleoperating it with the keyboard. Um, you can see that the cam Im camera image shows up there. You can pipe this data coming from this topic to, you know, anywhere you want to do your, your uh, image processing and, and things. So this is only one of the several sensors that you have in, in Gazebo. Uh, another cool thing that you can do is apply force or torque in things in simulation. So we have these objects here on the uh, on the conveyor belt. So I, you can just right click an object and then you see this dialogue where you can choose um, how much force you want to apply. And you just press and you can see that the little part is there hopping with the, the force that I'm uh, applying to it. <laughs> Um, you can, I'm also going to like press control Z here, see, and the part came back up. So you, if, uh, you go back in time when you undo things that you did in simulation, which can be very helpful. Finally, I'll show you here plotting, which is also new in Gazebo 8 that is coming up this month. Um, so, uh, you can plot most aspects of your simulation right there. So there is this convenient search bar. I looked for the wrist and the Z position of the wrist. So as a teleoperated. It goes up and down, and I can see uh, that pose in uh, in plot. And you can export this plot as you want. You can see it's really bouncy because I didn't put much effort into tuning this PID here. But yeah, um, it's a good example of a plot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's so much more that I could show you, but I only had 10 minutes. So uh, you know, there's logging and playback. Playback is much better now in Gazebo. You can skip back to a specific moment and use all these visualization tools to see your simulation right there. There's a building editor besides the model editor. There are actors like that guy that is moving there, but and also you can script uh, models to just move around. Like if you want a target for your robot to look at or something like this, you can just have this scripted motion, undo, redo, hardware integration. Um, yeah, there is a lot there. There are things that are uh, like roads that are not so important for industrial arms, but for other applications, uh, it's very useful. Um, and if you want to use Gazebo with ROS, uh, each version of ROS kind of comes with, goes along with one version of Gazebo by default, but you can make your own combination. I have a link there uh, to the to the wrapper versions that you can use. And from Gazebo 7, all the releases are synced with ROS. So we're releasing Gazebo 8 now in January and in May, I believe, uh, ROS Alterto is coming up, which is going to be Gazebo 8. So yeah, that's it. These are the resources, some links, um, and thanks for listening. Any questions? Uh, is there a way to make a robot pure kinematic machine? Uh, uh, I believe at some point this was supported in Gazebo, but we didn't uh, maintain it properly. So I don't think it's working right now. But this is something that we have been talking about uh, making it making it uh, work again. So, you know, turning off dynamics would speed up computation a lot and it's enough for a lot of people.
Um, yeah, plus one, plus one. Okay, noted. Uh, I'll let the team know. <laughs> the man is scary. Yeah. <laughs> so this this uh, actor is actually it's a colada animation, and uh, it it this one is installed with gazebo. When you install gazebo, there is like the stalking one, there is a walking one, there is a moonwalking one, um, and if you have your own colada animation. Uh, models you can you can import them into gazebo we only support certain kinds of animation so not all of them might work but the skeletal animation works for sure which is the one for humans um and and this specific man was done with uh with motion capture his movement so you can see that it's kind of noisy in some places and he kind of shakes a little bit it's actually noise on the motion capture um off topic, how is the guy controlled or moving? Yeah, so it's just uh, this one is just a open loop animation playing. Um, it's not it's not doing anything fancy. The the guy and actually something interesting about the the guy as well. It's only visible to uh, rendering sensors. So if you have a a CPU based uh, sensor like. Uh, that gets a point cloud, it wouldn't get the, the actor. It it's only visible to the GPU sensors right now. So it has no collision shapes, basically. Uh, was the industrial apps just for us or was it for another project? Uh, well, I put together the simulation just for this presentation, but the, the models in it, uh, I stole from another project that we, we have right now. There is a competition going on called the ARIAC. You can uh, you can Google for it uh, A R I A C, uh, which we are doing together with NIST, I believe. So I just stole some models from there, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't 3D model this whole thing just for this. I I didn't even have the skills to do that. Um, there's some green light from the box. At 3:30, there's some green light from the box. What's that? Mm. Until, oh, the hardware spec for the simulation. So I'll start with the hardware spec. Yeah, I did it on an Intel i7, but I, I believe I can run it even in a, in a computer with less RAM. RAM. Um, yeah, maybe HG RAM could, could be able to, to run the simulation. You can see that the real-time factor was one the whole time that I was recording the video. Um, maybe it's going to be a little bit slower than other computers, but I don't think it would be unus unusable. Let me see the three minutes 30. Uh, so I'm just changing it here on my... Oh, the, the green stuff that is blinking. So this is the contact visualization. Uh, the green lines that are blinking on and off. This is showing where the forces are being applied by the physics engine when objects collide with each other. So it can be really helpful for you to just like pause simulation and step through and see where contacts are happening to understand what's going on. Uh, yeah, that's that's the green green light the green little lines right i, I believe that's what the uh, yeah okay <laughs> any other any other question 